Listen, y'all. <laughs> the third time for sure, no doubt about it, is a is a charm. Uh, this is the third time I'm back, episode four. Hopefully, there's no delay. There's no technical difficulties. The struggle is quite real. I must say, uh, can't lie about it. It's real deal. The struggle. Um, I don't know why the technical difficulties are always coming at me, but we're going to try again. I'm going to bring her on. The issue is that I'm echoing whenever I bring her on and or delay. So here we go. I'm going to try one more time. I'm grateful, bro. Another day, man. You already know. Okay. Hey. You can hear me. Yes, it sounds good. Echo. Clear. Oh, oh my God. Third time. Third time a so, charm, I tell so you. We're back at it again. <sighs> it is the fourth episode of the Art and Talk Show. And I'm yes. overly grateful that this connection is working now. I don't know what. God got yes. in store for the other connection. Okay. But, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, let me get my thing set up correct. Okay. Oh, all right. So, uh, as the art and talk show goes, of course, I'm going to be doing the art and she will be doing majority of this talking. So, of course, I'll be asking questions, chiming in and stuff like that, but she'll be doing a lot of talking. So, today's show, of course, we're talking about mental health, we're talking about business, and Donald Trump. Of the infamous Donald Trump, right? So, um, the it's, Donald it's, Trump. It's, it's always, you know, it's always kind of one of those things where people are not a fan of that word at this present time, and some people are. So, mm -hmm. um, but you, you're gonna have, you're gonna bring a different perspective of why that. We're gonna talk about it. About. Okay, cool. So, um, we're gonna um, talk about I'm it. I'm gonna pass it over. I'm gonna pass the mic over to you. I'm gonna do, you know, do my thing, and I'm gonna let you go ahead and go through your okay. through the bullet points, and I'm gonna chime in, you know, back and forth. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Wonderful. So, hello, AC followers. Um, my name is Primrose, Primrose Campbell, but you can just call me Primrose. Um, I'm going to be talking today, like AC said, about mental health, business, and the infamous Donald Trump. Now, a lot of people don't like to talk about him, but hey, we're going to talk about it today because some things need to be said, some things need to be heard, and I'm ready to talk. So starting at the top, let me just tell you a little bit about myself, who I am, and why these topics are important to me. Um, I am an advocate of mental health. I went to Georgia State University, go Panthers, um, and graduated with a bachelor's <laughs> in psychology. I am currently enrolled at Pepperdine University for my master's in clinical psychology. Um, so I am not yet a licensed professional counselor. However, um, I am an advocate of mental health, as are you, because you're human and it affects you. Mental health affects everybody from sunrise to sunset. It doesn't matter who you are, what color you are. You have um, a mental health um, you know, part to yourself, a psychological part. So it matters for all of us. So we're going to talk about it today. And like we mentioned before, like two videos ago, two tries ago, I didn't know that I can't see comments. So if you all do have comments, um, AC and I are probably going to answer them at the end. However, if something is like burning desire and he sees it and he wants to ask you to talk about it, then we can talk about it. But um, if not, I'm just going to go through a few of my notes and talk about starting at the top, why mental health is important. So if you see me veer off a little bit, I'm just looking at my notes, all right? Word. So <laughs> to start this talk, um, mental health, like I said, is very important for each and every one of us, um, uh, especially in this time with all of what's going on in the world. Um, I wanted to briefly discuss, which is gonna cascade into the business and the Trump part, um, why it is important to recognize what is affecting your mental health right now, currently. Um, so I saw a quote and I'm just gonna um, read it out and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Um, it said, for those of you who wish to leave politics out of dealing with trauma, I wish to remind you that trauma is all about, li about living under social conditions 
where terrible things are allowed to happen and the truth cannot be told. Okay, so um, again, I'm gonna say that just to reiterate uh, and try to clearly state and see if you can understand without me before I break it down. So for those of you who wish to leave politics out of dealing with trauma, I wish to remind you that trauma is all about living under social conditions where terrible things are allowed to happen and the truth cannot be told. So um, the trauma that we carry is a direct result of the system that we exist within. So basically where we are living right now, um, you can't fix a, a problem or an issue without solving it. That goes from you know being in your family to being in the workplace to just being, you, you can't address a trauma or an issue without directly approaching that and talking about it. So that's why we're here talking about um, these specific issues given with us today. Um, and even the state of, you know, not just the state of uh, African-American or black people, but the state of white people as well. And Hispanics and, and Asians, everyone in between there, we're all a victim of for shorter words, the system, right? Um, a system that may not particularly be helping us as the American people. And I'm specifically talking about the American people. Um, other other uh, countries and demographics or people from around the world, it may be a little bit different for you, but um, all in all, the powers be still the same, right? So um, like I said, the, the results of the system that we exist within is where that trauma comes from and that trauma affects. So these aren't just our family systems. So it's not just, you know, my family um, treated me like this, so I feel this way and now that's why I'm broken, right? We wanna look at that and that is not the, the root of the cause. So when we talk about mental health and when we talk about politics or, and when we talk about, you know, the injustices going on in today's um, day, I just wanna point out that you cannot a lot of people try to avoid talking about politics and try to avoid um, saying, you know, how that is connected to them and how they're feeling right now. But it, there's a parallel there because it started somewhere in order for us to get here. Right. So um, there's no trauma healing without also addressing the collective systems that created it. So the problem that we are living in right now, we must address. Um, there are several uh people, leaders, world leaders right now that are trying to assist with addressing the problems that we as Americans are facing um, from a political standpoint and non-political standpoint. But we have to realize that it cannot happen with us trying to avoid a piece of the situation, if you get what I'm saying. You can't have healing trying to avoid just a part of the situation that is necessary for your healing. And so um, that's why I'm talking about mental health, business, Trump, you know, it all coincides, it ties in together when it comes down to dealing with these things and healing from the, these traumas of years and years and years of mistreatment of people. Um, and that's not just black people. Um, and a lot of us like to, you know, make it seem like, oh, it's just us. It's just our group. But in reality, the system isn't working for anybody. Um, <laughs> and you have to really pay attention to the laws and the, the constitutional legislations that we have that work for us and the ones that absolutely do not work for us. And um, there are people in higher powers, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, that are trying to assist us in getting us back to or to a place where we can all live comfortably. We can all, you know, live in harmony or some sort of the trying to get back to a better world. I don't want to say back to because honestly, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, America has always had this construct where you keep some people down and some people are up, you know? And so in, in my opinion, that that's never a good system for anybody. You can't, you can't crush some men and then boost some men and then say, hey, we're living great. It's not it's not a great situation to be living in. Yeah, especially if it's not you, you're going to sit there and feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm up here. Those people down there don't really matter, but that's selfish. Don't be selfish. So anyway, <laughs> um, so back to what I'm saying. So this is why none of us can um, sit in the comfortable space of privilege and bypass our responsibility for confronting and addressing politics. 
So I bid you like really pay attention to the fact that the stuff that's going on right now um, internally inside of all of us when it comes down to um, the George Floyd stuff and the Black Lives Matter and people killing people and uh, police brutality, all of these things, all of these things come from a long, long system of trauma. And just avoiding it will not fix the problem, okay? And that's the, that's the bottom line to the mental health aspect that I want to talk about that. Um, leading in from that, um, from the politics, let's talk about um, the business side of it, okay? So I am an entrepreneur, business owner. I do own several small businesses um, and one five, a 1C3 nonprofit organization. Um, my small business is Confetti Queen Designs. I'm just going to talk about it right now. I know we usually talk about it at the end, but I'm going to talk about it right now. Confetti Queen Designs, which is a t-shirt company, and um, I am an entrepreneur. I was raised from entrepreneurs, which my, my pa parents were immigrants from Jamaica, and they came to this country, worked on a <laughs> dime. You know, they came here with a dime in their pocket, and they made their way out, yes, big ups, man. <laughs> and they made their way out of, you know, poverty or the low class poverty. And um, they started their own business, grew that business, um, moved their children from where we were once living in New Jersey, now down to the South, we're in Georgia. And for history, um, we're just learning and going and taking things one day at a time. And, you know, praying and hoping for the best. However, with praying and hoping for the best, you still have to make steps in order to get to better. So with that being said, business and entrepreneurs yesterday, um, youngest in charge, was on talking about entrepreneurship and how he came into his uh, his entrepreneurship. And I really admire some of the things that he said. And I wanted to point out some key points with the business and talking about politics, which I just discussed in our mental health little charade um, in the beginning there, that you, in order to have your business, you need funding, right? This is just a very... Um, direct uh, point to it you need funding to have your business and in this present day like right now like today funding is much more easier to come by for small business owners than it was maybe five years ago like literally five years ago may have been much difficult but right now it's so much easier and that is because there are some um there are some policies that's been currently passed um just this past wednesday which was, what day was Wednesday? I don't have my calendar out right here. Oh, actually. Well, oh, I think it was the third. Yep. Yeah. Just this, the third. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that was was the third? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. <laughs> yeah, on the third, um, there was actually a new bill reform that was passed that um, Trump signed uh, for the PPP, which is the pay Paycheck Protection Plan. Yep program sorry paycheck protection program and trump just signed uh the new bill for reform on that in order to allow small business owners or self-employed entrepreneurs that's me to um benefit from funding more funding for our companies especially in this pandemic time or pandemic time so mm -hmm. what that is and what i'm trying to say is this is good news for us and it's a beautiful time right now for you to be an entrepreneur to start your own business to uh, legitimize yourself to get your llc to get your ein to you know just do the things that you need to do for yourself to set yourself up for the future because right now as many of us can see that once a recession or a crisis hit or a pandemic hits if you don't have an essential job or if you don't have your own business you're pretty much stuck in the mud um you know relying on your employer who you're with to either say we're going to keep you or we're going to toss you away because we have to do what we have to do financially for the business and what's best for the company and if you are not having multiple streams of income at this point in time in life you are seriously a little behind <laughs> a little behind let me not say seriously behind but you're a little behind because we we now realize that one source of income well we should have been realized but we now see that one source of income was never going to cut it 
Um, and I'm not saying get a, a bunch of jobs. No, that's never, and I'm not an advocate for a nine to five. Let me say that myself. I don't have a nine to five. I'm proud of not having a nine to five. My businesses do the work for me. Um, and I'm a, I'm a hustler. Like I like to go out and get it. Okay. So, um, but everybody's not like that. And I understand. So I'm just saying, start from the bottom and work your way up. If you don't have a business for yourself, um, that's perfectly fine. You uh, can start now. Um, you always, it's never too late to start, especially when it comes down to being an entrepreneur. Okay, so um, some key points that I wanted to talk about with um, the new bill, the new small business um, reform bill that Trump just signed was the Payment Protection and Flexibility Act eases uh, rules around the small businesses um, that people with the PPP loan funds can get. So I'm sorry, I'm reading and it's, <laughs> so the PPP loan before this reform came out, um, you had about, what was it, eight, 18 weeks, I believe. Yeah, it was 18 weeks that you had to, once you received the funding from the loaner, that you had to uh, spend that money and most of that money had to be spent on um, payment payment to your employees. Um, I believe that was 75%, yeah. So the current rules require business owners to spend their uh, money within eight weeks. I'm sorry, not even 18, wow. Even less, eight weeks and direct 75% of the funding towards payroll costs and get their loan, to get their loan fully forgiven. Now, I don't know about y'all, but eight weeks and this the reason why it was eight weeks before was because they believed that the pandemic would end in a month or two right they said oh this is gonna roll over it's gonna be done we're gonna get back to business as regular and you won't need that money anymore everything will be fine but look at the time now you know it's been march april may we're in june it's been we're on month four now y'all we're on month four now and the pandemic is still in full effect so what Trump said was, you know, we're going to go back and revisit this bill and I'm going to, you know, turn it around and give people more time to receive funding uh, and use their loans and have a smaller percentage. So now the new law extends the deadline to 24 weeks from eight weeks to 24 weeks. That is a huge jump. I don't um, if, if you don't really understand what that looks like, you pay your employer pays you every two weeks. Right. Um, and so you go from every two weeks and eight weeks having four paychecks to 24 weeks. You do the math. You know what I'm saying? Like you just get much more time. So that helps out you as the employer, if you're an employer or small business owner, especially like self, self um, employed entrepreneurs like myself, um, the funding that we can now get and have for a longer period of time is so much greater than it was before. Um, and on top of the eight weeks, uh, the 24 weeks that we now have, it was there was a, re a reduced percentage in the payroll cost that you had to pay. So it went from being 75% that you have to spend on payroll costs. So of that money that you get before, 75% had to go on payroll costs. So you had to pay 75% out. Um, so that means like even if you had business bills to pay for, I don't know, for me, T-shirts. If I had to pay for t-shirts before, you know, I would have to spend at least 75% paying my employee and then the rest um, on my t-shirts. And if you're a business owner and you know you have to buy merchandise and you have to get a lot of, um, a lot of office supplies or anything that you need, 25% uh, of your loans, depending on how you spend in your budget, of course, um, is not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money to keep your ship afloat during this pandemic such as this, such as as big as this. So um, now it's reduced to 60%. Yeah, some may say that's not really a big uh, percentage in reduction, but um, in numbers wise, depending on what you get, it can be a great help. And that extension on that especially, huh, beautiful. Okay, so um, I just want to point that out that in business right now, it's a great time to start your business right now, like not two weeks, like you can go right on um, the, uh, well, it depends on what state you're in. Let me not tell everybody, because it depends on what state you're in. I'm in Georgia. And in Georgia, you can go on the um, SBA loans, SBA.gov uh, loan website, and you can 
get a loan for up to $10,000 like in a week. $10,000 in a week if you are a business owner right now. If you're not a business owner yet, go ahead and start that because we don't know how long this pandemic is going to go on. We don't know. So if you started it today and two months later, the pandemic is still going on and you're, you've are you solidified all of your uh, business ordeals, you've sent in your name, you've paid for your LLC, you got your EIN, you got your uh, dealing straight and you can um, start doing some kind of business and show some kind of business, then you can apply for those loans. You can apply for those loans and get those monies and um, your loan will be forgiven as long as you follow, stay within the, uh, the requirements of 60% spending on your payroll and 24 weeks of, uh, of your deadline extension. So I, you know, it's, I'm giving you a gem that you can use right now um, to help you. So please, please, please don't dilly on this. It's a great resource. Um, I think everybody should be an entrepreneur. Everybody should be business owners. I don't think there's one person that should just rely solely on somebody else's dream to fund their life. I'm not an advocate of that. I believe that we should all be doing something for ourselves and, um, and giving service to others. You know, it helps you. You feel better when you're serving other people. And it's even best when it's your business serving other people. And then, you know, folks can turn to you and say, wow, yeah, you know, X, Y, and Z, they're doing this thing and they're helping the community or they're giving back in some kind of way. You feel good. They feel good karma's coming back around 10 times fold and better for you life is beautiful right so um get that business started don't delay <laughs> all right um so that's that's just a little tidbit on the small business um the ppp reform bill because this just happened this past week and i know a lot of people are very distracted with black lives matter and things that are going on in today's world i completely get it like we are feeling that trauma and that pain so we want to address it in an emotional way sometimes but I bid you to step away from the emotional side um, of you. Step away from the anger. Take a step back and see, you know, understand where it's coming from. Question why it's coming right now. And, you know, find a way to pull yourself out of it. Because let me tell you, you tend to make worse decisions when you're emotional versus when you have a clear head space for thinking and you can reason and logically think through things versus you're just being emotional, you're just being angry, you're just being, you know, just all these that are built up, pent up, especially if you don't talk about it. A lot of people I found that, um, especially in our community, a lot of people don't like to talk about their internal struggles or their issues or their anger. And that becomes a built up problem that we'll release later in some form of fashion, no matter you know what topic you're talking about or who you're talking to, it's going to come out in some form of fashion. So I bid you to, you know, if you don't want to talk to somebody that you know, or that knows you reach out to a therapist. If you don't have, um, you know, health care for a therapist, there are hotlines. If you don't have, if you don't want to call a hotline, call me. Like, <laughs> I'm giving you options. You, it, it's, it's best for you to release yourself and talk about the hard stuff versus keeping it in, pinning it in, and then it's going to explode later or you just, you know, make emotional decisions and then that hurts you still later. So, um talk about it open up you know be be out there right ac yeah he didn't hear me i said right ac yeah, yeah, yeah. oh okay uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was listening oh uh, no nah, nah, i completely agree i think that you know and as she said please talk to uh, you know what what it is i believe the uh our community our community doesn't like to go to therapy or go to uh, mm -hmm. you know, a psychologist because there's some type of yeah. stigma behind that of oh, no, nah, I don't want nobody yeah. thinking that I'm this, that, and third or crazy or whatever case may be. I'm so, crazy. I think that, right. I think that that's a big, that's a big barrier that that we have in yeah. our community. So, so that's one thing I try to tell people, like, nah, mental health is yeah. It's needed. It's, uh, it's, it's, 
It's needed. It's necessary, man. And it's necessary. Yeah. yeah. And if it's not a therapist, it is. talk it's to necessary. somebody like that. You, somebody that you're comfortable with, somebody that's willing to understand, willing to talk to you. So, um, but yeah. Yeah. So it's needed. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, like, I understand that in our society, if you're if you're born and raised in the Western world, which is America, which is where we are right now, if you're born and raised here, you're pretty much conditioned to um, suppressing those feelings and talking about the things that are necessary to keep you free. There are powers in this world that don't want you to be your spiritual self, don't want you to be free, don't want you to be in tune, don't want you to be and they have mm-hmm. strength, you know, they have power. So um, there are people like and friends even, you don't even have to just, you know, be someone who is studying therapy or psychology. You don't have to be that person, but there, there are people who understand that you have to be connected to a higher being of yourself and you have to be connected to the, the, the trees and the, the ground and the water. You want to be connected to the natural uh, world in order to um, help you spiritually come up out of these places of confusion because that's what it is like you've been blindsided for a lot of this life if you're living in the western world specifically because um this is where i live i've never lived anywhere else for a longer period of time i've traveled to other places overseas in europe i've traveled to those places but i've never lived there so i cannot speak on the experiences of living there but i can speak on the experience of living here in the western world and i can tell you that there are beings that are higher than us that do not want you to be prosperous that do not want you to connect with your spiritual self so that you can ascend to the highest power of your being and be prosperous and happy and fulfilled However, I am here to tell you that it is so possible and it is so necessary to pay attention to your inner self and the, the screams that you're, you're, that are bursting through you. And the way, the best way to do that is to just talk about it. It's the easiest thing. Like you, you just, you know, reach out to somebody. If, and like I said, you have me. If you're on this call today, <laughs> if you're on this interview today, all seven of you, I see my viewers, plus AC, that's eight. So you have me, give me a call and we can talk. There, there are very many things. And you know, this is the field that I want to go into. I want to help us. I want to help our people understand and see some things and ask some questions that um, others may not want you to ask necessarily, may not want you to see or know, but I want you to see, I want you to know, I want you to ask questions. I never want any of us to just take uh, uh, somebody's word for it, especially somebody who benefits from you never succeeding, you know, from you not moving to the next level of your life or uh, reaching for your greater self. If there are people that don't want you to be prosperous, that want to keep you down and they're in control of your life, it's time for you to take back your control, right? It's time for us all to take back our control, which we're seeing um, happening right now in the world during this pandemic. So many things are going on, but we have to be vigilant and aware and so that we can prosper, okay? All right. So down, down, down onto the next topic. So all of these topics kind of intertwine, but I'm just, of course, chopping them into... Uh, little sections talking about this and that and this and that, but we're going to talk about, oh, Mr. Trump. Oh, that Donald Trump, that trumpet, y'all. So a lot of people cringe at the sound of his name. And (laughs) it's funny to me because, you know, I was also that person. Like when he was running for president, I did not vote for Donald Trump. I can say that I did not vote for Donald Trump. I was like Hillary all the way because she's the lesser of the evils. How many of us have said that? The lesser of the evil. Lord, that's what we thought. But we now have to step back and um, question some things (laughs) that has come about in the most, uh, in the last four years of this man presidency, right? And we want to really look at really look at the cause and effects of his presidency, okay? So he, since coming into office, and um, one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to talk about things that I don't know personally myself, because then I'm going to be running around in circles, and 
I don't have time for that. So I'm only going to talk about what I know. If you know something and there's something that you can bring to the table, like I said, AC, you, um, AC and I will uh, answer your questions later or you can add your little tidbits, whatever that may be, and we'll get to it later. And then who knows, I may message you one-on-one -on -one so that we could talk about it and um, I can be enlightened. I'm always willing to learn. I love learning. Like, that's one thing about me. I'm not ever going to be a closed mind and be like, no, I know more than you. I don't want to learn from you. I don't know. That's not me. I love learning. And if you can tell me something that I don't know, and then I go look it up and I find that that it may be valid or, you know, even if it's invalid, at least I learned something and I went and checked it out. So now I know something new and I, I appreciate learning. I'm ever hungry, always. So um, back to what I was saying. So we've learned some new things coming into uh, these last four years of his presidency and we're moving up to the elections coming up, you know, the new presidency elections and ooh, tensions are running high. Everybody's trying to figure out which, which one is the lesser of the two evils now. Which one do we choose now, right? Um, it's crazy because everybody pretty much is seeing that the candidate against uh, Donald Trump will probably be Biden. Um, for me, it's, you know, politics is like, you don't want to talk about it. But like I said, in the very beginning, you have to, we have no choice. Like people want to have a choice in this, but we are kind of living in this society where you're forced into having to talk about it because they make your decisions. They affect you. You go to school because of them. You know what I'm saying? So you have to talk about it. You cannot run away from this. So we're talking about it today. Anyways, so um, so Trump versus Biden on Facebook a lot. He's been a lot of campaign ads. It's been a lot of uh, childish stuff going on. I, I posted it yesterday and I was just like, this is the most childish thing I've seen in a really long time because Biden was like, um, he wanted to, he put a, a clown hat on top of Trump's head. I know y'all saw it because it's running on like everybody's Facebook. He put a clown hat on top of Trump's head and was like, this is going to be his last birthday in the presidency. So let's show him. Da, 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 da. I was like, I was reading this and this is how I was interpreting it. Like Biden doing all of this. And I'm just like, aren't we grown people here you know like what's going on I thought this was a real deal candidacy you know elections going on why are we acting like Ronisha and Shay Shay down the way way or Karen you know because it ain't even it ain't even about the 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 afro names Karen is doing the same thing out here these days you know so it's like can we really pay attention to to the fact that these people are still human you know, they're not any better than you and I because they still have their beefs. They still throw their shots. They still do all of this. But what I'm saying is even that stuff is emotional. You know, like all of that is emotional. It's like, can you just be a man who is about his business and just want to get to the business and talk about what you can do for us instead of bashing somebody else? Like, what is that? But that's me, you know? Some people like to play dirty. I'm like, I don't got time for all of that. Like, let's play it straight and keep it moving. If you win, you win. If I win, I win. And as long as you're doing for the people, the American people, if you're doing right for the American people, that should be the highlight of all of this, right? And so that's what I'm talking about here today when I'm talking about Trump. is about who, and I'm going to use this term, and it's, it, it might seem funny, but I'm explaining myself. I said, <laughs> it's about who actually wants to make America great. I ain't going to say again. Because like I said before, I don't ever think it was. If you down here and I'm up here, it ain't great. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. That's just me. And I know that some people will argue that somebody has to be at the bottom. Somebody has to scrub the toilet. Somebody has to, you know, and I get it. Somebody has to, yes, but they don't have to suffer while doing it. That's just my opinion. There's enough bread to go around, just like there's enough, uh, uh, what, um, land to go around however the, the greed in some people the greed is what overcomes and what takes over and allows people to want to just snatchy everything you know snatchy 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 but it's like you don't have to do that <laughs> okay so yeah all right rant over let me go back so what i'm saying about ooh, my nose. what i'm saying about trump and um i just see since his presidency and when I was that person that also did, was not like, I'm not saying that I'm pro-Trump, 
but I'm pro whoever is for the American people. And we have to look at the differences and what's been going on in the House and the bills that he has been passing, which he has done a lot. He's funded HBCUs even, like millions of dollars in the past. I think it was a couple months they just solidified it. And so now he's going to be funding HBCUs like yearly. Like, y'all, he's giving our colleges money. So um, that's just one thing. Um, he has moved the, uh, wow, who, I was talking to a friend about this like two days ago, talking about the checks and balances that he now has in place in the um, White House and not just from the House, the, um, the oh gosh. Why is the what? The Senate? Yes, the Senate and the, um, golly, the people, the court, the Supreme Court. There it is. So he has moved new checks and balances in so that no one, um, one group can rule and then we have to run with it. Now, this group has to check with this group. And if this group don't like it, they have to come to a compromise. And that helps us so much more. And people don't even realize what's really going on and like like I said this bill the the uh, PPP reform that he just passed last week we're all so concerned with Black Lives Matter and the the distractions because all of it is just huge distractions going on right now they're just trying to keep everybody distracted so you cannot really pay attention to what's going on and see who's really for you like they want you to see and let me ask you this and this this was asked to me and I was mind blown to actually go back and check and see the validity of how this works. So in the past five presidencies, um, can you tell me, or can anybody answer this? Or AC, you're the only person that can answer it for me right now. Um, can you tell me in the past five presidencies, which uh, president has the media crushed as much as they have been crushing Trump? Um, I would say between... Obama, Bush, and Clinton. From what I mean. However. Yeah. However, so okay, I like your answer. So between Obama, Bush, and Clinton, and the media, like quite like the media is doing right now, the media has been turning people against who they particularly don't like and who they is are the people in control of the media and the entertainment and everything that you and I watch from Facebook to the tell live vision because that's all you see on there to the uh, what even newspaper sometimes fake news right <laughs> using Trump's terms I'm sorry y'all I'm not like trumpet or nothing I just think it's funny but um but all of these things you we've watched the media crush Trump, like turn everybody against him, make sure that we all hate him. And, you know, I was watching his biopic. There's a biopic on Netflix for Trump. My friend put it on the other day, watching it with her. And it was crazy because it's like in the beginning of Trump's life, everybody loved him. Like he was some superstar, the rich guy, the cool, the making deals and the you're fired, the apprentice guy. Everybody loved him. But then coming closer to this presidency and after he took office, all of a sudden, everybody hates him. And when I say everybody, I mean not everybody, because, you know, there's still those people that's like, I'm for you regardless. But there's a much more massive majority of people that just hate him. And why do we hate him? We really have to ask the question, why do we hate this man? Why do we hate this man? Who has been putting conditioning in my mind to just hate this one individual? I know a lot of people will say, well, no, his Twitter and what he says and this and that and the third. But we have to actually take a step back and realize who this man is, okay? This man is rich. He was born into wealth. All he ever knew was wealth. He's never worked for anybody. He's never had to answer to anybody. He's never had to explain himself. He, none of that. What you and I have to do to get by on a daily basis, to go get a job, to go do this, to go do that, just to get by, he has never had to do. So his psychology is much different than you and I. So when you, where you may not say something, he will sure as hell say it because he don't care, you know? He doesn't have to care. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. He doesn't, whatever. So the way that he presents things on his Twitter or social media, or even when he's standing up giving a uh, conference, when he's talking, he, you have to realize that 
he's straight and to the point. He does not care about your feelings or my feelings or Tom, Dick, and Harry's feelings down the way. He's going to say what he's going to say, how he's going to say it. However, the media has a way of twisting what he says in order to paint their picture of what they want you and I to see. Why? Because the media is controlled by the elitists, the people that's high up at the top. And I want to tell y'all a story, but it may invoke a little bit of um, curiosity and rage. However, um, let's, I, geez, how do I even put this? Because you have to ask, like, why are the elite, if Donald Trump is an elite now, right? He's the president. But why are the elite who own the media, who owns your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, everything, even his Twitter, an elitist owns that. You know, they run these media so that you can only see, like, when you post stuff on Facebook that's oh too real and they, they restrict you or they take it down, because that has happened to me, that's happened to a lot of my friends plenty of times. We've tried to put things out to enlighten the people and, and Facebook would say that's not in our community guidelines. Basically, we don't want the people to know that, so we, we don't want you to put that out there, so we're going to take it down. And they've snatched it down a couple plenty of times because there's things that they don't want you to know. You have to ask yourself, okay, now why is this media making Trump look so very bad, but boosting everybody else that they want to put into presidency, like Biden, and making him look also oh very good. Why? And even when, like, um, Charlemagne the God, he had a uh, interview with Joe Biden, I saw the other day, and he was talking to Biden about his crime bill back in 1994, which he did sign for and endorse, y'all. So let's not forget that. And that messed up a lot of people in our community, sent a lot of people to jail, wrongfully and you know and now this man is and he's been in the white house in the um in a, a position of power for over 20 years he's been there for a really long time so he knows what's going on you know what i'm saying he knows everything the nook and cranny of what the um what the whole end goal is for the presidency for the people that's running our country, he knows, he's aware, and he wants to move into the position of power now um, because his compadre Hillary wasn't able to take that spot because looky here, curveball Trump won. Now, I know a lot of us were upset about that, you know, but it happened. And since it happening, a lot of good things have come out of Trump's presidency. He's actually done damn near everything he said he was going to do. And, you know, I'm not anti-Obama, but Obama promised us a lot of things and didn't do none of them. Didn't do none of them. Like he did get uh, you know, the gay people's um sorry, well, LGBTQ, ain't nothing wrong with saying gay. The LGBTQ community, he did allow them to, you know, or had force the bill to be passed so that they um have equal rights rights in marriage, which was a win for a lot of people. So um we were happy about that. However, what about the the people that look like Obama and, and all of our struggles that we've been going through for all these years now, whoop de woo we got a black president. He looks like me. I'm thinking, you know, when I was just like everybody else in 2009, when Obama won, and I'm like, yes, we're going to be free. And then, you know, life kept going and it was like, it's still the same, you know? So we came back down and, and nothing really changed. But, um, <laughs> You know, it's cool. We had to swallow that hard pill. He was out of office. People still loved him because the media made people love him. Regardless of what he didn't do for us, the media made sure that you saw his skin color and you saw just his skin color for why you want to keep Obama at the top or in the top of your head. So now the very opposite thing is happening for Trump. However, he has done more for us than Obama did which is like crazy to to me that people don't want to acknowledge that like we want to bypass that simple truth of the matter being that we had a lot more uh gimmies with trump than we did with obama like i said the business loans are one of them and that works for everybody that's not the 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 business loans are not subjugated to white people or or huge companies you can be a single entrepreneur and get funding easily now. Like, if you want to know how, ask me. I'll tell you because I get them. You know, it's not like it's it's hard to see. It's just what we're conditioned to see. You get me? It's all in the conditioning. It's all in the mental, all your psychology. Um, they knew that if they can control a man's mind, they can control 
everything about them because that's that's it like we our greatest attribute and i talked about this our greatest attribute your greatest attribute to man is the way that we think our ability to think we're not stronger than animals out here animals can kill us if they want to but animals cannot outthink us they cannot outthink us therefore our greatest attribute is our thought process is our ability to be able to think for ourselves however they know that if they can control your ability to think for you meaning putting things on facebook and instagram and twitter and the tv and and entertainment in front of you to control you to keep you distracted from the things that are really important they know that they got you they got your vote every time and so we want to make sure that, like I said, we're, we're not just sitting here and going with the media, the mass media's opinion of somebody. We want to actually look at that person, see, com compare and contrast to your favorite president, okay? Just compare and contrast to your favorite president what Trump has done. And like I said, I'm not sitting here saying, I'm not a coon, y'all. Like a lot of people, I um, and in this, I'm in this terrible group right now called uh, what the two million men March or something like that. And uh, there's so many people when I try to explain and I'm not an emotional person on Facebook because it's like, why, you know, it's not real, but I'm not an emotional person on Facebook. And I try to explain these things to people on Facebook and they're like, you're a coon, you're a racist. You're they're throwing all kinds of stuff at me. And I'm just like, no, I just, you know, I'm logical. I think things through, I research it, I read um, some great books out here if you want me to recommend, like, you, you really, there, your mind is your greatest attribute, use it for yourself, don't give that power to anybody else, to any president, to any uh, uh, government, don't give it to the, the Tom, Dick, and Harry standing next to you. Don't give your mind to anybody else. Use it for yourself. Think logically. Ask questions. Don't settle for safe. Don't just go and say, well, that's too hard for me to think. One woman actually told me that, and I was just like, I am mind blown that people think that politics are too hard to think about, so we just don't want to think about it at all. That's like giving away all of your rights to be able to choose for anything because you think it's too hard to think. Because why you've spent all of your time mushing your brain on social media and TV and all the entertainment around you that you don't even want to use your brain to do the thing that was meant for, to think. So it's like, it's crazy to me sometimes when people say stuff like that. It's like, no, care for yourself more. Care for yourself more to use your brain because that is the best thing you have, baby. Ain't no money, ain't no diamonds, ain't no pearls in the world that's going to be better than the brain that you got upstairs, okay? And as long as you keep that thing in good health, keep that thing in good health and, and always, like I said, ask questions. Like, let's not sit here and be like, oh, well, he said it this, so it must be so. No, that's, no, don't do that. Care for yourself more. Care for your country more, right? Because we are in this country. We're in this together. Like, I don't care if a person's white. I don't care if a person's black. I don't care if a person's Asian, Latina, anything. I don't care about your race or ethnicity. If you're in this country and you and me can ride the same bus or the same train and get to the next place, we in the same boat, baby. We in the same boat. So we must think for ourselves and, and, and put the right people in power to actually help us versus putting them in power just because the media said that they were better than the other person like what like you know what i'm saying like let's look at this let's look at this like and the thing about trump also that i will um say like he is straight up this man is straight up like he's not gonna sugarcoat nothing for you like i said before he didn't have to do that growing up in life he didn't have to appease to anybody so that's not in his dna to do he's not gonna sit here and lie to you in front of your face and then turn around and do something else, right? He's not going to be a different person tomorrow. No, you know who he is. He's telling you who he is. He gives you what he's, he tells you what he's going to do for America. And then he does it. He has done it time and time again. He's done what he has said he was going to do. So, you know, um, like I said, and if you don't know what he said he was going to do, that's because you weren't paying attention to the elections for real. You were too busy hating emotionally, being emotional, hating him because you thought, oh, he, he has to be with the KKK and racist. By the way, he deemed the KKK as a domestic terrorist group. He don't like them. He ain't with them. But people just want to, you know, keep their emotions so intact and their ego and just be like, no, I hate him because 
that's what the media said to do so i hate them no that's that's no like ask questions y'all i really i really want us to ask questions i really want us to look at the bigger picture i really want us to do our research in the name of research we have google oh my god google one of the best search engines in the world right now because why you can find almost everything and if you can't find it on google boy i don't know where you can find it okay <laughs> but you can find it on google bing. oh bing bing good too True. i don't good. use bing as much but you know I'm, I'm a google girl and uh youtube university sometimes too hey you know but um either way it goes uh like i said i just feel it best to always ask questions always uh, question everything around you don't just take somebody's word for it care for your mental health enough to um, speak out about things um, be honest and transparent with yourself uh, with yourself because it always starts with you like a lot of people think oh well, I gotta tell so and so this and so and so that no you don't gotta tell nobody nothing you tell yourself first and then once you've coped with you know, being comfortable with you being honest with yourself, then you can go be honest with the next guy. But if you can't be honest with yourself, it ain't gonna work, baby. It ain't gonna work. Okay. So Yeah. So Yeah. Right. Um PC <laughs> You're dope. Thank you. For those who just joined in, yeah. by the way. Thank you. Of course <laughs> I was um doing art. I had to I did two canvases when I was doing I was prepping that canvas, and then this one I was working on, one from the first episode. But those who just tuned in, I'm pretty hey. sure you came on to the, the Trump segment. But prior to the Trump segment, <laughs> she was talking about mental health, and she was talking about business. So um, I there there was some comments and questions that I seen scrolling up as, as I was paying. We okay. won't uh, address it vocally right here, right now, because I got mm -hmm. another meeting like in person. I got to go and uh, do another interview. <laughs> so, um, but we are going to respond to the comments. Whatever you ask, whatever comments, she, if it's for her, she'll respond to it. Um, and if it's for me, I'll respond to it and vice versa. So uh, much love. Uh, P PC, before you go, much give love. all your social media, yeah. all your social media accounts so they can follow business and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so um, thanks y'all for listening. If you want to follow me or ask me questions or anything of that sort, um, you already see my Facebook is tagged in this video. So go ahead and click that. Message me if you would like. Um, my Instagrams, because I have like a several, a few for my businesses and one for my personal self. My personal Instagram is Miss Primrose Campbell, y'all. That's Miss M I S S Primrose P R I M R O S E Campbell like the soup C A M P B E L L. Okay, that's my personal Instagram. And if you'd like to follow any of my business pages, you can also see them in my um in my bio on my personal Instagram. But just for telling, um, my T-shirt company, which this says your future therapist, because that's what I will be, your future therapist, here for you every day anyway. Um, my <laughs> t-shirt Instagram is CQ underscore designs T. So that's CQ for confetti queen, because that's me. I'm the confetti queen. I love confetti and I'm a queen. Duh. And underscore designs, because I designs T's. T-E-E-S. CQ underscore designs T's. Um, then I have a vitals Instagram, which is for, um, holistic health and, um, oils, um, essential oils, uh, stones, um, even this right here. I have a chakra bead, um, bracelets and necklaces. That is going to be PDC underscore vitals for vitality. So PDC. P D C underscore vitals. And um, lastly, my other Instagram is for my nonprofit, my 501c3, or my summer program, which is currently going on right now. I'm about to go see the kids in a little bit. Um, it is V O L underscore enrichment program. That's Vision of Life Enrichment Program. That is uh, the summer program that we have where we geared it 
towards the youth and helping them understand themselves much about much like what um I just talked about you talked to you all about now but of course in a much more um remedial way to reach them on their level um so you can also follow me there see what we got going on see if you want to help the community come help with us we're always taking volunteers. Um, we're always accepting donations, not of just money, but clothing too, because we do a clothing drive and go out and give it to homeless people in the fall and in the spring. So please, please, please follow, click share, like, and be great. Yeah, awesomeness. So that's it. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate you once again. We are gonna respond to all the comments um, once we get Yay. the time to do so with we'll most boss soon. Um, so I appreciate everyone tuning in. Make sure that you follow them. Follow, sorry, follow her. And, and but <laughs> go ahead and share this video. Much love, peace and positivity. PC, I appreciate you. And I hope you have a blessed and great Thank you, day. AC. All right. Holla you too. My wonderful friend. Bye, y'all. <laughs>